Visit stogiegeeks.com forward slash debonair for a list of retailers who carry debonair cigars. Buy some today and get a little more debonair. Welcome back, everyone, to the Stogie Geek Show. This is our debonair ideal segment, Cigar Line Breakdowns, is what I called it. Mm-hmm. Because I think last week, one reason I want to do this, because I think last week I said the Charter Oak Lancero, which doesn't exist. Because I got Charter Oak confused with the Tabernacle. Okay. Right. Fair enough. So I wanted to run through the Tabernacle and Charter Oak by Foundation Cigar Company, our good friend Nick Melillo. Uh, so first, the Tabernacle, which in the Lancero was absolutely fantastic. I was talking with John next door. I think it is uh, fantastic. Um, this is uh, AJ Fernandez actually makes this uh, for him. It's a Connecticut Broadleaf wrapper and uses a San Andreas binder. In filler from uh, Yamastron Valley in Honduras plus Esteli and Jalapa Valley in Nicaragua. It comes in six different sizes, including a 7 by 14 a 7 by 40 Lancero in a 13 count box. Um, it also comes in a 4.5 by 52 Torpedo, a Corona Robusto, Toro, and Double Corona. All of the sizes are in the wiki, wiki.stogiegeeks.com. This is episode 225. So that is the Tabernacle which I wanted to run that correction. Mm-hmm. Um, the Charter Oak um, pays homage to Melillo's grandfather, uh, who, while earning a modest salary working for Winchester Repeating Arms factory after World War II, smoked exclusively broadleaf cigars manufactured by F.D. Graves on State Street, while no joke, Rick Ardito's grandfather, a guard at Winchester, also smoked F.D. Graves' biggest-selling broadleaf muni makers. So that's a little of the story from Foundation Cigar Company. Uh, this comes in, the Charter Oak comes in five different sizes in two different wrappers. There's a, a shade wrapper and a broadleaf uh, wrapper, Connecticut shade, Connecticut broadleaf. Um, this one comes in, I like the the Robusto was was pretty good. Oh, it's a Rothschild 4.5 by 50 uh, in the broadleaf, which I like. The Toro was good too, 6 by 52. It also comes in a Petite Corona. Five and a quarter by forty-two, a grande six by sixty, and a six and a quarter by forty-six Lonsdale, uh, which I have yet to try, which sounds good. So just to clarify, in our sizes and blends uh, on those two cigars from our good friend Nick Melillo. Now, what we're smoking today is the Umbagog by Dumbarton Tobacco and Trust. This is Steve Saka's favorite place to go fishing. He kind of said this is a bundle bundles of ten cigar that he would recommend that you smoke while you're fishing. So uh, lower price, a couple dollars less uh, <clears throat> a stick. We're smoking the Robusto Plus, which is, in fact, a 5 by 52 The suggested retail on this is $6.45. Uh, again, meant to have that lower price tag so that you can go knock it around on the boat while you're fishing or throw it in the, on the green while you're golfing and hit the golf ball and pick it back up like Joe Hollywood likes to do. What do you guys think of this Robusto Plus-sized Umbagog. Um, I like it. I definitely like it. Uh, I, as you get halfway through, it's, it, it really starts to, to kick in nicely. Yeah, it's, it's a lot more um, body and richness to the smoke as you get halfway mm-hmm. through. Uh, Joe, I think that's a, that's a great observation. Back end's a little sweet. Yes, on, on my sweetness. It's a, li- it's a little... Like a Same rapper as me, Carita. Same rapper. Right. The, he says these didn't pass the quality test. Uh, which means, I don't know, there could be sunspots, there could be imperfections uh, to generalize in the wrapper that um, he's making all these bundles. Now, according to Cigar Federation... So it's the same wrapper binder filler as the Micarita? Uh, as far as I know, yes. Yeah. Okay. As far as I know, yes. Someone correct me if we're wrong on that, but as far as I know, yes. According to Cigar Federation, these come in Corona Robusto, Corona Gorda, Robusto Plus, Toro, Churchill, Gordo Gordo, and a Gigantes. 
Gigantes being 7 by 56, the smallest size being 4 by 44. Uh, and again, this one is 5 by 52. Now, the Toro size 6 by 52 is very similar to the Onco Largo, which I like to smoke in the Mika Rita, which is why I was excited about being able to buy essentially the same cigar right. in a bundle. The blend to me tastes exactly the same. I wouldn't be surprised if it is the exact same binder wrapper. A binder and filler in addition to the same Excellent wrapper. price point. I've gotten some sweet tobacco, and I would certainly uh, smoke this while playing poker, for sure. Mm. The retro hail is good, too. But for your if, poker, if they have a Gigante's at 7 by 56 That's mm. your poker playing cigar. Yeah. I think you go big when you play poker. There you go. If I were to be a poker player. <laughs> I tend to just be a poker. I have ADD. And I, poke I things through my finger like I did this weekend. I guess that's what makes me a, b- a poker. <laughs> when I play, I, I wear varying disguises, mullet wigs, sta- mustaches, uh, whatever. Do you need a mullet wig? Because you pretty much have like a, a not, full-on mullet Now I right do it. Now. I'm talking, you know. You go, have like a natural mullet going on right, man. Going back 10 years or so, I, I pulled out all the, all the stops, all the tricks. <laughs> That's uh, good Good to know a little bit about Rain Man. Very nice. Uh, so, Umbagog, not a whole lot of information about these uh, as they're just hitting the market. They're just starting to hit stores here in New England. Um, I know uh, Havana Cigar Club has some. I'm told Mr. J. Savannah Shop, uh, Smoke Shop has some. So, uh, nice. I, it, I, this is great. I mean, I'm going to buy bundles of these. Yeah. Uh, I just personally love this blend. Ecuador and Connecticut wrapper. Uh, it is a dual binder. Oh, wait a minute. Am I reading? No, I'm sorry. Bundles of how many? 20? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm reading into the next. I didn't separate my segments correctly. So forget what I just said. Bundles of 10. Okay. Yes, bundles of 10. At a $6 <clears throat> price point or six change? That's awesome. Wow. It, yeah, it is. For six change. Yeah. This is a great $6 stick. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> this, yeah, is, yeah. this is, you know, if you're going to put it into that category, this is... If, uh, for those you, of you listening, definitely uh, Bang for your bu- and I'll tell if you, you seek the stick out. You know. To me, it's smoking exactly like this Robusto Plus is smoking exactly like an Onco Logo. Yep. In terms of all of the smoking characteristics that I love. Big and that was my cigar of the year last year. So, yeah, yeah it, tons of smoke production, which is, I think that this, this Bla Umbagog and the Mi Carita has a perfect amount of smoke production for me. It's not too much, mm-hmm. um, but it's, you know, like if you put smoke production on a scale of 1 to 10, I like like an 8, right, or an 8.5, and, and that seems to be where it is for me right. on this one. When you get like into the 9s or 10s, it can almost be too much. The draw tends to be a, a little too loose when it gets up in a 9 or a 10, but I like to be at like an 8 in terms of smoke production and looseness of the draw if you were to put that on the same scale. Right. Um, that's where I like to be. Uh, me personally, uh, other people... They like to be right in the middle at five or even like a, a four. Some people like a little snug uh, of a draw or a little less smoke production. That's cool, too. You know, different strokes for different folks. It's a great subtle sweetness to it. Yep. It does. It, it, yeah. It's just, it's I, just it's a great really flavor. Good I, the, one of the reasons that I like this blend is because I feel like you can smoke it any time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the one that we smoked at the event, the Negotiant mm. Monopole. That's what this uh, uh, officially this blend uh, is called, and um, hold on, I'll, I will pass it to you guys uh, in a second to talk while there's uh, where this thing came from. I've had just one uh, one so far. I've got the rest of them tabled and aging, but it was uh, it was a good smoke. How many came in the I package that we got? Three? Three. There was three, three. all yeah, three different I've, sizes. I bought an extra package, but I've burned through the first package. Did it? <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> you know. That's a good sign. Go I have on. them aging. Sure. <laughs> so there's going to uh, age for like another week. <laughs> uh, in the negotiant, there's a number one, a five by 52. There's a number two, a five and a three quarter by 52 Bellicoso. And there's a number three, a six and one eighths by 48. And this is the blend profile that I was reading ahead too much. So this blend in the negotiant, which is the collaboration between Tatuaje and Latelier, the reason I didn't have this information before is because I think it was spelled wrong somewhere along the lines yeah. for the event, and I wasn't finding the right uh, information. This was introduced at the 2016 IPCPR trade show. This is an Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper. There's a dual binder, and Dan uh, Dan Welsh, yes. uh, Dan Welsh at the event was talking about how the San Andreas um, it was special. That binder was special. I'm told. 
uh, from uh, cigar-coop.com, and I think Dan mentioned this too. It's a wrapper quality leaf they're using on the binder. Correct. So it's a San Andreas wrapper leaf that they're using on the binder. Now, there is another binder, to my knowledge, that has not been disclosed. He only talked about, in Coop's blog, only talks about that San Andreas. So it's a double binder. One is a San Andreas Mexican, but a wrapper quality leaf in the binder. Uh, the filler is Nicaraguan. That's all we know about the filler. Uh, I thought it was very well balanced, and I'll give a little more uh, about my take on it. These are made in, in my father's cigar factory, and I just wanted to set the record straight on the Negotiant Monopole is what it's called, uh, a collaboration. So the term Negotiant tie, has ties to the wine industry, something obviously both companies have been kind of uh, drawn to. Uh, in this case, the Negotiant is uh, who purchases the grape juice or wine from other vineyard, vineyards. And that's where the name uh, Negotiant comes from. So that's that. Now, we've talked previously about Illusion Singulaire. You guys, you know the stick, mm -hmm. right? Smoked the last week. Yep, smoked the last week. So there's actually been, and I had to go look this up for my own edification, right? Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven releases of the Illusion Singulaire. The first one being the Phantom, which was, in my opinion, by far the best friggin' Illusion Singular. These things were friggin' awesome. Holy crap. That was in 2010. It was a 6x50. Um, they were $12 a stick. They came in boxes of 15. There was only a, th a 15,000 total boxes uh, put together for that initial Singular Phantom 2010. I can tell you, if you can find Singular Phantom 2010s, or the, that was what it was called in 2010, was the Phantom. Awesome. I mean, go back in Sui's history and listen to us talk about that cigar. It's just off the charts. Um, 11 and 12 was the one where it, the 2011 didn't come out till 2012 because they boxed 11 and 12 together. One was a, one was a broad leaf, one was a, a Habano or something like that. The wrappers were different color, but they boxed them in the same one. That was the next release. And, and that one was good. Uh, they only did um, 11,250 of each one, 11 and 12, but they, they boxed them uh, together. Uh, then in 2013, there was a Rose Croix. Uh, 2014, perhaps is probably my runner-up in this line, uh, was the uh, an, anu, Anunnaki? Anunnaki. A-N-U-N-N-A-K-I. Anunnaki. Sounds, sounds good. Anunnaki. <laughs> that was a five and a quarter by 54. Uh, that was a 2014 release. They did 30,000 of those. That thing was friggin' awesome. For a larger ring gauge cigar... I, it was just... Was it 60 or was it 56? No, it was 54, but 54? It, some of it felt like it... It was because it was so much larger than I think the previous releases. Um, although those were 6 by 52. I don't know. It just felt like... It almost felt like a 56 in my in my hand for whatever reason. It was a slight box press, if I remember correctly. Uh, awesome. Awesome cigar. That had a ton of flavor in it. There were 30,000 cigars uh, released in that release. Uh, then they did the 2015... Six and three quarter by forty eight. The mis miserere mis miserere miserere m i s e r e r e mis miserere 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 miserere, miserere. Mis miserere. something like that. Six and three quarters by forty eight. What if I take a, like a Spanish class? I don't think that's Spanish. No, though. that's not <laughs> Spanish. That's, something that's like French. Uh, that's French. That's okay. like in Joe D's vocabulary. He's like French and stuff. Yeah, come on, Hendrickin. What do you think? <laughs> so the. <laughs> I'm Irish today. He's got the Hendrick and colors on, too, <laughs> today. Uh, and then in 2016, the most recent release was the Kadosh. Kadosh. K-A-D-O-S-H. Kadosh. <coughs> That's a four <coughs> in one quarter by 48. Uh, they come in boxes of 30, and they're about uh, $8.80 uh, a stick. All that information came from Half Wheel, who we used to term as 50% flat tire. That's how we used to... Reference half wheel. Um, and there's some information uh, about Coop. Oh, so the um, the re some of the releases of the Illusion Singular are returning in regular production and not as limited releases. So the 2010 Phantom, the 2014 Anunnaki, and the Illusion Singular 2015, the Miserere. Miserere? Miserere? Um, uh, each of these three releases are Nicaraguan Puros. Different, the blends are the same as the original and are going to be offered in 15-count boxes. Um, also being added to that is the Singular Kadosh. Uh, this is a Corojo wrapper. Nicaraguan, Nicaraguan Puro. So it's a Nicaraguan Corojo wrapper 
which is usually Nicaraguan Corojo 99. Um, the Kadosh is a short Robusto. Um, and so it goes sideways in three boxes of 10. So yeah, you can find more information on our wiki. I link to both articles from Half Wheel and Cigar Dash Coop, who provided the information about those three select releases from Singular's history being released as regular production. So um, good stuff on the, the Singular. I have not smoked the 2016 yet. We'll have to get our hands on that and, uh, and review it for the show and review some of the... I'm curious to see... The Phantom and the Anunnaki, Anunnaki, I think I'm saying that right. Phantom and the Anunnaki in their regular release, production release, if it differs from the you original. You have any stashed away? Uh, I definitely don't have any. If I have one Phantom, I might have one Phantom. It's at the bottom. I've maybe. got some Anunnaki stashed Indeed. away. I got those stashed away. That's when we usually say, like, I don't have any more. Right. That's what I mean by I have some stash away. I mean, I don't have any more. <laughs> dig deep for the buttery ones. Yeah. Yes, dig deep for those. <clears throat> uh, so, yeah, that was uh, what I wanted to cover in the, the debonair. Because sometimes we talk about cigars, and then, like, just through natural progression, we're like, oh, didn't they release that before? Or there was a previous release of that, and we're like, uh, hold on, to the Googles. <laughs> sure. So I want to run these segments to go through uh, all the lines so our listeners have the correct information. That's what and we're all about. Tightening, tightening the shit up. Uh, the ship up. Excuse me. <laughs> Moron than I am talked about a cigar that didn't exist last week. I wanted to definitely clarify that. Um, and the Tabernacle Lancero is, is really good. It so happens. But I have to go back to the Charter Oak and smoke some more. It is good. Um, the broad, uh, the um, Rothschild was better than the Toro, in my opinion. I thought the Robusta had a little more flavor. Um, so I want to go back to some of those. Those are like selling out next. Door. I was gonna say the price. The price point on on the, on those are exactly um, uh, amazing. It's a great smoke and broadleaf it's, cigar it's, for like well similar to the Umbaga, right? Yeah, like they're you're both in that making six, like seven really, dollar range, yeah. and you know it's it, which I think is actually neat. Neat. I think it's neat how some you know uh, I noticed that um, the cigar industry often sometimes mimics the wine industry as well. You know, you don't get to pay. 30 40 50 80 dollars for a great bottle of wine uh same thing you know you don't same need to spend Scotch 12 20 dollars for some nice finds for, to be for had. a great cigar you 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 can same find thing with some bourbon, hidden gems scotch yep. even uh whiskey now is like i bought a uh, it was a 12 year old irish whiskey and it was aged in bourbon uh barrels. Casks. Casks. Oh, bourbon casks. barrels yep. you know, bourbon casks yeah mm-hmm. and that was not that was sub fifty dollars for that bottle. It had a great amount of sweetness to it. Didn't drink like bourbon. Didn't bourbon has that very distinct flavor. But to your point, uh, the you don't have to spend a lot of money on, on all this. And we talked about this in the show history. Like there's some great finds, cigars, wine, and whiskey as a general sense right. of the term uh, to be had. So, and I think that's one of the things that I love about the show is we we all find those different kind of things and share them with each other and our, our listeners are like, dude, like you don't have to spend $200 on a bottle of scotch to get something really, really good. Now scotch, right. I will say is like, dude, there's a huge difference between a ton of 12 year, like the 12 years that are out there and like the 18 or 25s. There are, there are some, there's some wins in there, but there's differences certainly uh, in that. Do I think you always have to go spend two or $300 on a bottle of scotch to get something good? No, absolutely not. That's something that the listeners could also uh, hit us with the feedback and, uh, Absolutely. What, where about the show? You can go to stogiegeeks.com, click on the stogie section, and uh, we usually post the cigars that we have throughout the week. So definitely um, after the podcast, go to stogiegeeks.com, click on stogies, or uh, it'll be posted uh, throughout the uh, social media of Stogie Geeks, Facebook, and Twitter as nice well. feedback, so. give and take with the listeners. Yeah, I've Absolutely. had a couple of listeners. I've I got some. You've been going back and forth. I've been going back and forth with, with 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 some good listeners. So anything that we have, uh, definitely keep the comments coming. Love to hear back from you. Uh, you know that's why I usually try to ask price point as well. It's not so much to focus on uh, price. It's definitely to give a point. It's what of, the people want, give of, it to them. Of what we're trying to drive home. You know, you, you can have you know for 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 six change. You can have a, a really, really great cigar. This is, a, this is a really good cigar. And speaking of Sogas of the Week, that's coming up next, so stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> 